Hey guys, what's up? Excoundrel here. Sorry I've been delayed, but I've got two big bits of news as to why I haven't produced much content this week. The first bit of news, not really related to content, but it's something that I am doing with Dalcy TV, who you might remember from streaming Vainglory, is we've created a new YouTube channel called Apex Bamboozled. We're going to be doing Apex guides a little bit like I do for Vainglory. You may have noticed that I did a weapon guide a few weeks ago. I moved that over to the new channel with the new weapon on it. And we're also going to be producing some gameplay videos. And in general, expect content that is like the content that goes onto my channel, but also with some gameplay stuff edited in. I'd really appreciate if you guys went in and subscribed to the channel. If we hit 1,000 subscribers, I will do a giveaway on my Twitter again, and I'll make sure that you guys on the YouTube channel have access to it. Second piece of news is mainly the reason why I haven't released anything for five days. Just became a dad. This is my baby boy, and I just wanted to share it with you guys because you like my family, and I sort of really appreciate everything that you guys have done for me over the last few years with all of the Vainglory content that we've produced and enjoyed together. So let's start off with the mid lane. Now, it's the funny thing about the mid lane in update 4.0 with the Steam release of Vainglory is that we haven't had much shift in terms of who is good. The majority of the people that were good on 4.0 are good on, sorry, are good on 3.10, are good on 4.0. Magnus being probably one of the most overpowered guys on this current update. Now, if you're wondering where I got these build path sh sort of graphics from, created them on vainglorifier.com. They have lots and lots of guides on vainglorifier, really helpful for new uh, new heroes. If you wonder how I decided which heroes went into this guide, it went with a mix of stats from vgpro.gg, looking at match replays from pros on vgpro.gg, and also talking to European pro players as well as high-level players, as well as playing in Tier 10 Europe myself. So Magnus, you saw there, no surprise that he is constantly in the meta right now. Celeste is going to be the next a hero that is currently in the top five. These aren't in any particular order for any new viewers. I just put the top five. The ordered stuff comes when I release my tier list. I have a predicted tier list on my channel, which I'll also put in the description. Uh, there is some changes from that that I will do over the next few days, and I'll release my proper tier list tomorrow or the day after, very likely. Malene, super good. Actually, Malene's in, in an interesting place right now. She can be played top lane, jungle, and even in the mid lane. I put her in the mid lane because I think that's where she suits really well. She's got the ability to roam and be aggressive there. But a lot of people do like to play her in the jungle and in the top lane too. So keep that in mind. If you pick Malene and you can't get her into the mid lane, she is viable across multiple lanes. Still think Samuel, really good. The reason Samuel re remains really good is he bullies people like Malene and he bullies people like uh, Celeste. So he's got a really good early bully laning phase. And so because the, like people, the likes of Celeste and Scarf are really in the meta right now, Samuel is a good early game bully who can pressure them. So that's why he's sort of retained that position in, in the mid lane. It's not that he's like inherently OP himself. He's just good at dealing with the current meta picks in the mid. And despite all the nerfs, Scarf is still a very solid mid laner. Just the range on his A makes him very deadly um, and also really annoying to lane versus. I'm sure if any of you have played versus a Scarf recently, you'll know how annoying he is to lane versus. Uh, and again, Spellfire into Dragon's Eye into Eve of Harvest and Broken Myth is a really standard core build. I would recommend that you get Halcyon Chargers early on in your build though because they provide a lot of all-round good utility as well as much needed energy regeneration because that is something that happened recently in Vainglory where energy regeneration overall was nerfed so you do need to pay attention to energy regeneration items. Right, top lane, interesting lane because it's a super varied, super viable lane where a lot of things can work. So it's diff had a difficult time picking sort of the best things. Now, Jewel still retains her position in the meta despite the nerfs, and I think she's probably best suited to the top lane. Can be played in the jungle, but the gold income is necessary given all the nerfs to her scalings. You kind of need that extra gold income to make sure that you can hit your item spikes. You still can play her the same way that you played her before. She's still really strong. And there is that weapon power build path going around that I've seen as well if you want to play her weapon power. But I think her CP build path is still probably the better one. Big fat grump boy. He is in the top lane now. And the serpent's mask into tension bow build is kind of the most viable. Then you kind of go tank after that. Uh, I've seen burst weapon power where you go for the Sorrow Blade into Tension Bow, and then of course there is the CP variant with the Aftershock and Broken Myth, but the Serpent's Mask Tension Bow build is the most viable and the most used, and then you kind of go utility with Pulse Weave and a bit more tanky options. If you want to go balls to the wall, you can build two Tyrant's Monocles as well. Lance is really good on 4.0, and you'll see him in this tier list in multiple places, as you see Grumpjaw. 
A lot of people have been playing Lance in the bot lane, by the way. I talked to Old School, one of the pro players from North America, and he said that I've been playing Lance in the bot lane as, as a way to counter some of the bot lane weapon power carries. And so Lance just generally is quite applicable all over the map, although he's better played the Serpent's Mask Tension Bow build than his Captain build right now, although his Captain build is still good because his base damage is high. The new guy on the block, Sang Feng. Now... I did do a video and sort of talking about his base damage, and his base damage is ridiculous. However, his scalings are really bad. So he's like, he's really powerful in the laning phase around level three to six, and that's where you can look to abuse. But if you can't hit your abilities, they have got quite a long wind up time, then it can be difficult to make this guy work. The builds that I have seen people play is a tanky build with very little stress on going for anything with CP or weapon power. If you need to go CP or Weapon Power on Sang Feng, you go for Broken Myth or, Wep or Serpent's Mask, but everything else is tanky utility. And then Reza. Reza is in a great place right now. Good in both the jungle and good in the top lane. And I think the Spellfire uh, Shatterglass build suits the way his scalings work right now, as well as having a little bit of defense thrown in for good measure. Love Reza. He's in a really good spot. All right, let's go and take a look at the bot lane because the bot lane has again had a few shifts but realistically a lot of the stuff that you'll see in the bot lane is very similar to what you would have seen before and i think the bot lane overall is in a pretty standard place kinetic still super strong wouldn't say she's the strongest on this update i didn't put in my predicted tier list that she might be but she's still really good um so she's up there in terms of some of the best and again that, that weapon power build path that is still really core really simple for these high attack speed weapon power carries Sora Blade into Poison Shiv into Bone Saw. Good single target chunk damage, good sustain, and overall makes Kinetic a really, really strong uh, bot laner. Okay, next up, Glaive. This is a contentious one. This is something that you'll see in Europe more than anything else. Vox got shifted out. Vox really hasn't seen much play, and I don't think Vox is in the best position he's ever been in. Glaive has come through because he's got this really good build path. Poison Shiv, Spell Sword, Tension Bow, uh, Breaking Point, and you can max C and max... Um, B for a really high lifesteal. It doesn't say that on the build here, but you can go that for a really high lifesteal build, which is very hard to kill. And Glaive's very good at ganking and putting pressure on the enemy top laner as well. He's actually a good a bot laner that will have a good matchup into a top laner specifically. So Glaive, go and try it out. If, you, if, you, if you're interested, you can go and try it out. But if you don't want to, just play what's good. And I'll tell you what's good, Baron. Baron is so good again in Vainglory. It's been a while since he's been super strong, but Baron is in a very strong position in Vainglory right now. Him and Gwen, I think, are the top two bot laners at this point in time, and I think that uh, I think that Baron is one of the sort of the, the pick or ban type um, bot laners. Gwen, super good again, another really strong bot laner, and it, she and Baron kind of dominate that bot lane meta. I you know I I know it's a bit weird putting Glaive in this list, but I do think if you if you want to go and try it out because I think Glaive Bot could genuinely be a really really solid pick. But Gwen, standard build path, Sora Blade, Poison Shiv, Tension Bow, Breaking Point, good sustained damage, gives her the ability to build up stacks as well. And finally, Ringo. Uh, Ringo's got a lot of interesting build paths, and he hasn't, I haven't really changed it since the last update, but Ringo's still strong. Has to be a little bit careful because of the prevalence of things like Grumpjaw and Lance in the meta, and Ringo doesn't really have the ability to reposition that easily, so... Playing Ringo, you have to be very aware of your positioning at all time. You will have to get a reflex block because of how prevalent Lance and Grumpjaw are. So yes, Ringo's good, but you do have to be careful playing him. Okay, let's move on. Take a look at the jungles, the role that we have left to cover. We have the captains too, but we'll talk about them at the end. Jungle, again, another interesting one where a lot of things are viable. If you saw my tier list, I separated junglers out into tanks, into mages, and into assassins. So this is going to have a mix of a lot of those. And the assassin that I think is very underrated in the jungle at this point in time is Anka. I think Anka is really strong. Even though she got nerfed quite consistently over the last few updates, I think she can play really, really good in terms of damage output. I think she's one of the stronger assassins. I did think Koshka was up there, but after more play, I much prefer Anka over Koshka. Do think Koshka is good? Do think weapon power attacker is good but i think that anchor in general is very very good at getting onto those backline squishies and just delivering a huge amount of burst damage as well as him, her being so mobile she's good at getting away from people like lance and grumpjaw speaking of lance told you where you'd see him again he's really strong in the jungle and really strong in the top lane lance's base damage and the ability to gank makes him a really powerful pick on almost any vainglory roster right now and so i think you guys uh definitely if you're big lance players try him out in the jungle try him out in the top lane i think he is probably the strongest he has ever been um maybe sort of since release i think lance is good 
if you've been watching Leon at all, you'll have seen him playing Inara, who has a core build of Aftershock and Clockwork, and then you basically go full tank with something like Pulse Weave, which gives you a bit of extra engage potential. Aftershock Clockwork, with whatever boots you like realistically, some people go Halcyon, but a lot of people go Journey, is essentially a 25 second fully leveled ultimate cooldown which just gives you so much mobility so much ganky potential and is really great for the team so inara i think super strong so told you you'd see reza again likely one of the strongest junglers on the update right now reza has been shifted into a position where he's just really good reza is really really good right now um any of you that got, any of you that got that david reza skin back in the day you can use that well not even back in the day that wasn't that long ago was it but you can use that skin to your heart's content right now because reza is in a great position in the meta really strong and in general very adaptable in terms of his lanes and grump jaw yes exactly grump jaw anything that's good in top lane that's a tanky bruiser is generally good going to be good in the jungle so Grumpjaw also a great jungler you could say that i would should have looked for some more variability here but this is generally what you'll see if someone gets lance or Grumpjaw, you'll either put them top or put them jungle and then you have other options for either role so i just think yeah lance Grumpjaw, reza just good across the board right now in vainglory and in the jungle especially so all right take a look at captains because captains had a bit of a shift in terms of who was good but not a huge one sustain has become really important because of the removal of iron guard contracts the likes of adagio and lyra i think are some of the strongest captains on the update um but let's start off with one that hasn't really changed and that's lorelei lorelei is still good can still use the protector contract in the early game because she's got those range basic attacks um, and in general despite the nerfs you can't really replace the fact she's got great zone control with her b she's got a stun and she's got the ability to give a free reflex block and removal cc from a allied hero as well as giving them a huge shield she's just got a loaded kit that makes her really good and that uh, is going to keep her in the meta in terms of captains for quite some time now but lorelei is still a great captain yates I mean, he's like the Blitzcrank or Vainglory, like, especially because there aren't that many other options to play into him. Yates just, if you get a, if you get a hook in lane, it's just too good. Now, he's not a protected contract type of guy because his ability cooldowns are quite long. So Dragon Blood Contract, when you get a pull, you get an immediate slow that allows you to land your B. That makes him super powerful if you can get those hooks landed and he can be very difficult to deal with. So Yates, yep, great, great pick in the, uh, the mid lane captain role. Lyra, again, like I said, protect a contract, super heavy sustain. Lyra is a very strong captain right now, just because that sustain is so sorely lacking across the board. I think Lyra might be the best captain in the game because her sustain is that much better than every other captain in the game. So yeah, Lyra, again, when it comes to build paths for captains, you'll notice that they're all the same. That is because build paths for captains are super flexible and super variable. So consider what you will when it comes to uh, building your captains. Adagio, again, I said, I think sustain is super important right now. So Adagio, definitely a pick that you should consider if um, playing in the mid lane captain role. I think not as good as Lyra in terms of sustain, but has that ability to activate protector contract really nicely. And so I think Adagio is someone that is very strong, also has that big ultimate that can impact team fights really nicely. So I think Adagio, again, like I said, super good mid laner. And finally, Churnwalker. Churnwalker is probably still one of the stronger captains and again he can use that dragon blood contract too if you can land a hook get them in pull them in with a basic attack but if you don't want to go for that you can just start the spirit boot uh, the sprint boots and the oak heart which is a pretty solid start for churnwalker doesn't have that iron guard contract start anymore but again he's still a very oppressive captain in the mid lane so he's still good yates is still good in general you'll notice that a lot of the captains overall are still quite good in this current update that they were before the only person that moved out was arden arden just again has been nerfed quite a lot. Can't really play him in many places right now, but uh, yeah. Right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please, if you have made it this far, go and uh, subscribe to my new YouTube, new YouTube channel, Apex Bamboozled. I have got it in the description. I've got it in the pinned comment. It would mean a lot to me. All right, guys, I'll see you soon.